Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, first of all, Edge turning heel makes no fucking sense, okay? It really doesn't. Edge doesn't need turning, and just him turning heel against AJ Styles. Just because reasons, even though there's no legit reasons, they decide to brawl for some reason. It made no fucking sense. Okay. Okay, so yeah, Ed, Edge versus AJ Styles is happening in WrestleMania. And, listen, I don't mind this match happening at WrestleMania. Do I think it could be a good match? Sure. But the problem is, there's no story. And, for some reason, wrestling fans or people don't give a shit that, oh, there's no storyline, but they just want to see a good match. And that's a problem. Stop caring for wrestling matches. Because, again, wrestling is not a sport. It's not a sport. What makes wrestling matches great is storylines and characters. Edge is a great character, okay? He can talk, he can write, not only the, one of the best wrestlers, he's also a great on-screen persona and character. That's why it's great having him back. But this is the problem with him when coming back now. Because now, unfortunately, first of all, now it looks like WWE's ruining, ruining his book and they're ruining him. And they're having him turn heel. Because, you, yeah, sure, yes, of course, you need a heel in this match. But wouldn't it make sense if Styles was the heel? Okay? Wouldn't it, why not make Styles the heel or, or whatever? Why is Edge the heel for some reason? Listen, don't get me wrong. Yes, Edge is one of the best heels back in the day. But him turning heel on Styles made no sense. And why does he hate Styles now? Like, they never interacted. Okay, let's talk about this. So, Edge versus Styles. Doesn't make any sense storyline-wise. Why does it make any sense? Because they're just having a match. Because Edge, oh, he had an open challenge. And again, that's a problem. Like, wrestling should not, like, acting like, oh, him, like, acting like Edge being at WrestleMania is like a WrestleMania streak. Or a title match. It's, it makes no sense, okay? Wouldn't it make sense, and if wrestling was good, wouldn't it make sense that for Edge versus Styles, for this to happen, shouldn't they establish a story to again for each other, you know? And that's the problem with these dream matches. Like, apparently, yeah, the match, apparently, the story for this match is that, oh, it's a dream match. And the fans want to see this match. That That's a, probably the most dumbest and most boring way to promote a WrestleMania match. Listen, I'm not saying Edge is boring. I love Edge. Do, do I not mind this match happening at WrestleMania? Sure, I don't mind it. But there needs to be a legit story. Imagine if Hogan and Hogan and The Rock. Okay, imagine Hogan and The Rock. That is a dream match, by the way. That was a dream match by a lot of people at the time. Imagine if that match happened at WrestleMania, right? If that happened, but there was no story. And the match was only happened because, oh, we, 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 we never faced each other before. But let's face each other now and have a good match because the fans want it. Do you not know how much that would be boring and make no fucking sense at all for that match to happen? And imagine if they didn't do what they did for their feud. Austin, just the reason why their feud, that match worked for WrestleMania is because of the story it was involved. The, the build up to it. The, them interacting at No Way Out. Them having their interaction at the night after No Way Out. And then leading to The Rock challenging Hogan. You know how Hogan says, you know, the fans turn his back on him, blah, blah, blah. You know how, you know, and The Rock interrupted. Like, oh, you want to face the icon and shit? Yeah, but you face me, you know? You, know, you face the new face. And not just that, what, what, what Hogan did to The Rock. You know, the, the NWO attacking him, the ambulance. That's what makes you want to care. That made you care about that match. Okay? That's an example of a dream match. Imagine if also, if Triple H versus Batista at WrestleMania, that was what people wanted to see, right? That, if knew anything, was a dream match at the time, too. You know? If anything, let's, let's, be, let's point this out. Dream matches are really, if anything, any match, by the logic, is a dream match. If there's a story and it makes you actually care. Yes, sir, sure, dream matches, you know, it's like, oh, you know, we want to see this, these types of wrestlers interact. Like, you know, the best stars, like, who knows, Shawn Michaels versus The Rock, you know, or Undertaker versus Sting. 
You know, that, those kind of matches. Like, the two of the best wrestlers of all time, let them hopefully have a match, right? Or that's a match for you to envision. That, like, but what makes those matches work is there's a legit story and characters involved, right? It didn't work when... when uh, remember when, like... What, here's the scenarios like been happening lately. Like apparently, unfortunately, dream matches are viewed like, oh, you know, let's just have a dream match instead of making a story. Case in point, when Styles versus Nakamura at WrestleMania, you know, people apparently that was a dream match, but that was only a dream match to smart. A lot of these ma dream matches nowadays are just basically for smarts. You know, they only care about wrestling. They don't care about stories and shit. But like, you only you want to care about their their match like without the story like what the fuck that makes no sense okay wrestling supposed to be about stories and characters you know building up to that match at WrestleMania. Why that match didn't work and why that match was under him because there was no story. The match only happened because oh Star uh, Nakamura won at WrestleMania and he chose Styles because that's a dream match. That made no sense okay. Shouldn't you fucking want to challenge somebody because you hate the guy and you want to be like a uh, you know. Whatever happened to wrestling, you know, what when wrestling's supposed to make sense, it's all about good guys and bad guys. This is also like, let, let's imagine, also, in a TV show, shows like Cobra Kai. Imagine if, you know, like, if, you know, the dream fight is Chosen versus Terry Silver, okay? And apparently that's a dream fight by, uh, by Cobra Kai fans. Imagine if that fight legit happens on the show, but there's no story. There's no interaction between them or build up for that fight. It just happens for the sake of happening. Do you not know how much that makes no sense at all for that fight to happen? That's why you need stories and dream matches. It, you, that's why TV show, that's without a story. Because again, wrestling is a TV show. Without a story involved, who the fuck gives a shit? About any matches or whatever. And that's the problem with wrestling nowadays. The lack of characters and storylines. And now Smarks, they're okay with this match. Okay, it makes no sense because there's no story. Going back to like about Triple H and fucking Batista. Imagine though, Batista won the Rumble. And then all the mind games that Triple H has done. Imagine if fucking Triple H didn't do that. Imagine Triple H, you know, preventing Batista from picking him to face at WrestleMania. All the mind games, you know, because he doesn't want to lose the title. Because he was, he was that guy that he wanted to be the world champion who could have power, you know. He wanted to run the show just to prevent Batista from taking the title. Imagine if he didn't do that. Like, what made that storyline good? If anything, that made people want to see that match. If he didn't do that... Would people want to still watch that match? You know how fucking dumb that would be? You know, not doing all that shit? Because that's why, that's why storylines matter. That's well, If anything, Styles and Edge is not really this dream match, I think. It's just a Like, sure, I don't want to mind seeing it, but it's not like this big dream match. But if it, to me, again, a dream match is it, like a must-see match. But there's a story. And there's a problem. This is the problem with wrestling. They don't take advantage of making storylines. And that's the fucking problem, too. If anything, this this match had already a story that you could have used. You know, for example, when Edge returned to the Royal Rumble, he injured Styles by accident and eliminated him. You could have used that to base the storyline. You know, when Styles came out, you could why again, this is what makes sense. Maybe Styles comes out, attacks Edge, well, you know, and then he says, I accept. You know, it could have been so easy. And then you could have, you know, Styles mentioned how, you know, how you eliminated Rumble and injured my knee. Like, that's what's Royal Rumble. Again, we're the world of WrestleMania. Would it make sense that, you know, use the Rumble? Because that's what WrestleMania feuds were based on sometimes. Feuds like Hulk Hogan versus, uh, not Hulk Hogan. Like fucking Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle. Shawn Michaels even versus Ch Chris Jericho, you know, uh, for, uh, for the WrestleMania matches. A lot of matches were based on like what happened. Uh, fucking Edge and Orton, you know, two years ago. If anything, now it's just it sucks that really Edge turning heel and it ended up being like the most underwhelming version of what happened two years ago with Edge and Orton. Like, why is Edge turning heel when he's the fucking when he just came back and he's like the veteran? Like, it makes no sense. Again, it, may, it would make sense more if Styles was the heel to turn heel, or he should have he should have been the heel all this time. Why did you turn him face? I don't fucking know. Again. It made no sense also have not having Edge in the Rumble. Maybe you could have had something, something where they interacted in the Royal Rumble. Or heck, why wasn't Edge in the fucking Chamber match? Maybe you could have had something interact with one of them and eliminate each other. And then, you know, they could call call each other out. And then you could, you know, yeah. Like, that could have 
been built for WrestleMania. Instead, of it's just, oh, I'm going to want to face you because the fans want, and I'm going to turn heel just for the sake of being a heel. Which just ruins the fucking sh It just ruins everything. And especially, it doesn't help with Edge turning heel, okay? I hope people understand where I'm coming from because it's a problem. It just, first of all, Edge, again, turning heel makes no fucking sense. And literally, this ma match makes no sense aside from, oh, it's a match that never happened before and the fans want it. That's not what wrestling's supposed to be. Wrestling's supposed to be about fucking characters and storylines, okay? And doing the best match pot and, you know, building up to those match. Any match could be a dream match, for instance, if there's a story. A, a must-see ma basically a dream match is a must-see match. And if anything, if you built this, if, if only you built this match from the get-go, this would have been, this would have actually been a match that makes sense. And you know what? I, I would have understood, again, it just makes no sense. Styles should have been the one to turn heel. Maybe like he should face his few. And also the fact that this 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 segment main main event in the show, you would think that it would make sense. Like maybe like you brought like a a, a guy like a, a like a old like a returning wrestler. Like let's say if seen like it's John Cena, if he was to return, that would have made more sense than anything more than fucking Styles. Oh, but you want to see Styles Cena again? At least they had a fucking feud. That uh, at least they actually had a rivalry, and it would make sense. And also that's actually a bigger match to do at WrestleMania than Styles and Cena. You know, you can always do Styles and Cena another time. But, like, not Styles, but Styles and Edge another time. But, like, what would make sense? Because, again, this was a main event segment. And, again, he called, uh, and then, like, Cena and Edge had a past. And it would make more sense, again, ending with that segment. And also, maybe that could have been for WrestleMania. Because that's a match for WrestleMania, like it or not. And that actually draws money and viewership. Styles and Edge, if anything, doesn't really draw much money, in all honesty. Okay? It, it really doesn't. But what would make it draw money if there's a legit story, you know? But unfortunately, there's no there's no story for this match. And and you just have Edge turning heel for no reason, just attacking him call, and saying, Edge, you know, I don't want, oh, I don't want the uh, old, I don't want the tag team styles who gets to be a bomb, I want the bulldog. What the, what does that mean? Like, what the fuck? Shouldn't you fucking want to face the guy because you hate him? Instead of like, oh, I want to have a great match possible? Wrestling's not supposed to be about that. And that's one of the reasons why also Undertaker and Goldberg was such a disappointment of a dream match. Yeah, for instance, okay, Undertaker and Goldberg, that's a dream match, okay? And what made that match make sense is, let's say, before their match, they maybe, like, Undertaker, you know, he, if he ha was beating up some jobber, maybe, like, Elias, like, we could have done the Raw the Mania. Like, remember when Raw the Mania, Undertaker beat up Elias? Maybe, like, jobbers could have tried to attack Taker, but then Goldberg saves Taker, and then, you know, face-to-face -face with Goldberg and Undertaker. And then Goldberg maybe, like, you know, talks about the Undertaker. And then, like, how it felt good me the Undertaker. And I always wanted to face the Undertaker. And then, you know, I would never forget what he did when he eliminated me from the Rumble. You know, shit like that. And then it would lead to him challenging the Undertaker. And then that would make sense for them feuding. But then, fuck it all. What they did for their feud is like, oh, I, I, I wanted to face you because it didn't happen before. And I want the unstoppable Goldberg, not the family man. It made no fucking sense. I'm sorry. It made no sense. Okay? Sure, like, and then, and, and obviously what happened at that match... You know, it, it fucking ruined it. But, like, it, like the also a potential of calling a dream match. But, in the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that it really makes no sense storyline-wise for Edge versus Styles. I understand they want people want to see this match. And then, yeah, oh, and again, the only reason why people want to see this match is because, oh, Styles is the face of SmackDown when, at, at, when Edge wasn't there. Like, again, really, Styles, like, the face of SmackDown when literally he was the face of SmackDown when SmackDown was drawing ro low ratings. Apparently that's interesting for some reason. I wouldn't mind seeing this match. Again, I don't mind seeing this match, again, if there was a story behind it. Sure, you could have Styles mention that, but it would make sense more if Styles was the heel, and maybe if Styles beat up Edge instead, and, you know, maybe if he, if, if he didn't just come out straight, maybe what he could have done if Edge was waiting for a challenge, maybe Styles beat up Edge... And then, you know, like, out of nowhere, and then you said, ha have him say, I, I accept. And then maybe fucking Styles come out, like, you know, why attack Edge? Because, you know, oh, you know, I don't really like Edge. You know, I think he's a piece of crap. You know, I will never forget of him injuring me at the Royal Rumble. You know, shit like that. You know? That's what you could make it make, make sense. Okay? God damn, like, how, why can't you make... 
Yeah, and then you know, I I I made a I was the better uh, face of SmackDown than him. Simple. It's really it's not even that hard, man. But now I just this match the story is like I want to have a good match. I want to have a dream match. I need WrestleMania. It makes no sense, man. And then Edge turning heel because we need a bad guy. And then he does the underwhelming version of what happened to him against Orton for the WrestleMania feud. It makes no sense. And again, Edge should not be a heel, man. Because, like, he come, he came back. He should be fucking just like how Shawn Michaels was. The only time he should be turning heel is if, as long as they make sense. Like, I don't know. Like, him turning heel because he, he, for some reason, like, wants to be a bad guy against... The, it makes no sense at all. It just, there's no real reason. There's no real reason why he turned heel. So that's all I have to really say about this shit. I just, overall... Fuck this whole pseudo dream match crap. It will only be a dream match if there's a legit story. But if anything, I just think it's kind of dumb. Am I saying the match will be bad? Maybe not. Maybe the match will be good. But it's just like... The whole term of dream matches should be... You've got to have a story still. It can't just be about, uh, oh, this is a dream match. This is the, what the fans wanted. I wanted this match. You wanted this match. It should be like building towards this match. Okay? Sting versus Ric Flair, or no, Sting versus Hogan was a dream match. Ric Flair versus Hogan was a dream match. They didn't base their match, their feud, based on a dream match. They based it off a story. You know? You know? They based off a story. You know, Sting, you know, being the, uh, the guy, who, you know, he was trying to rebel against the NWO. Ric Flair, he was, you know, you know... Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan, you know, Ric Flair proved, saying, you know, how he was always the better face of the company, you know, then like Hogan coming to w, w, WCW after leaving WWF, that's how you build a story, okay, that's a story, not this whole, oh, this is a dream match, I'm, I can't wait to see a WrestleMania, okay, that's what I have to really say, that's my point, overall, I don't know, I just think wrestling just sucks nowadays. It's the fact that, like, oh, there's, like, there's no stories now. Like, they don't know how to make views make sense anymore. I don't know what to tell you. That's why I'm not going to really be as interested in this match as Smarks pretending there. And that's the sad part. Smarks only care about the in-ring action. They only want to see, they only care, oh, I can't wait for, to see this match. Shouldn't you want to see this match to see how this feud point per goes? Like, Come on here. Wrestling's supposed to be about fucking storylines and characters too. I don't know. I'm just wasting my time here, I guess. I'm just rambling, but that's just what I have to really say, people. Until next time, peace. Yeah, bye. Fucking pathetic. And fucking fuck Diddy for turning edgy and kind of ruining him. And it's just... Again, you kind of have a... It's not that hard creating a story. Okay? And people, stop pretending to care about dream matches. Wrestling should be about fucking storylines. And you need to make a story. That way matches can actually be true dream matches. Because so it can be must-see. Now I don't really care much about Edge versus Styles. That's just my opinion. It would only make sense if there's a story. But, hey, whatever. Maybe it might be a good match. But, like, I don't want to really see Edge lose. And him being a heel. It makes no sense. And plus, Styles is not this young guy as people claim he is. He's old just as... It's not his fault that... It's not anyone's fault that, oh, he spent his... His youth in TNA. If he was really this young guy, he uh, he should have been WWE a long time ago. But he's not this old. He's just as old as Edge. And if anything, Edge is a better rusher to win. Just saying. Till next time. Peace. Yeah. Bye. Fucking fuck WWE and fuck Smarks. Fuck about dream matches. Ugh.